Hey everybody, it's Easy. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join me. We are in another 50-50 war. It's Damage Inc. GB Elite against Wisconsin Elite. So, interesting matchup. The Wisconsin people, they look pretty good. So, I think they're going to get completely slaughtered. I don't know, that's my opinion. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the wars and the, it's going on now. It's in the earlier stages, so we'll see what happens with it. But we do have... Some interesting things happened while we were at the war. First of all, this first attack was from Jebahia or she, sorry, Jebba, I don't know if you're, you know, it's sad. I, I still don't know some of these players if they're um, male or female. You know, it's, that's pretty bad for me. But I don't go in the chat and ask, are you a B or G? Maybe I should. Anyway. First attack done right here is a farm attack. It was it's called, it's a bowler witch attack, nicknamed the bitch for all you clans that are over PG or whatever it is G, non Disney. And the bowler witch is is becoming a, a more reliable attack ever since the last buff for the witch, where it's getting harder and harder for the defenses to target the witch because the skeletons are getting made a little faster they're pushing towards the defenses a little better and it's just harder for the defenses to switch off of the skeletons to the to the to the witch they're not any stronger than they were since the last buff they're not any faster or anything like that but they're just producing the skeletons a little faster and i think the skeletons actually got a very small little buff as well and we all know that tiny little changes in in the game make, can make a big difference so expect to see a lot of witches in a lot of different attacks we're seeing it already uh, seeing it using it <clears throat> so as the war starts to progress we have kk who's neon knight who's the i don't know if he's the leader oh my god i think he's the leader of gb elite <laughs> if he's not the leader because i think they may have several people that switch out leader He's definitely one of the more influential players there, and he's the connection that we have with GB Elite. So I'm going to call him the leader. Sorry to anyone else that takes that position. I know I've seen Karma, another excellent player over there with the leader position. Um, he comes into the clan and says, hey, you guys got to check out this attack. It's called the Bitch Slap. I just watched a video on it, and he comes in and starts doing these practice attacks. And if you're watching the attack now... It's one of these overpowering type attacks where it's kind of a spam or a mass attack. Um, but it's not just all of one troop. Um, I think Supercell has done a pretty good job of eliminating the ability to use all of one troop. And, and to be able to have a 3 star attack unless you're really dropping down on your opponent. But this attack here, he's putting in... I'll, I'll go play by play on the, next, um, on the next replay of it. But more or less we're using bowlers healers witches and then a couple other troops sprinkled in there with them just because uh you know he puts a couple wizards in because the wizards have a really big punch so you have uh, a group of three witches that are producing all these skeletons then you put a wizard in there and just one wizard can actually help those little group of, of witches push around the base he also had a couple of uh of balloons that he put in at um the, the opportune times to help with cleanup and, and such so I watched this attack. I watched him do four or five attacks. I actually wanted to record all of them and the chat was going so fast that I missed it. So I only got one attack from him. Um, or two maybe. I think I actually got a second attack in this in this uh, video um, during, the, during the challenging stages. And immediately I liked it. So I was on Sable and decided, okay, I'm going to try to use Sable and see if I can do anything with sable she's the weakest of my time town hall nines uh she's maxed on defenses but has like level 15 or 16 heroes whereas uh my other nine has level 20 something heroes so slowly but surely getting those heroes up uh, for anyone that has taken over multiple accounts like i have um it's hard to upgrade three different uh accounts on, on the when they both have when they, all of them have both the king and queen so anyway in this attack so what we did here is we started off with three bowlers i'm sorry three witches in the two corners each of them have two healers on it and then i put one more um one more one wizard in each of those groups so you have a wizard three witches two healers in each corner and then in the middle 
I put another three witches, the clan castle which has bowlers in it, two more healers on it, the king and the queen, and we went with that. Now this is a very similar attack to what we call the flex, what we call the wicked flex. There's other names for attacks like this, but this is when you go around the outside with these walks. This is, happens to be a witch walk. Uh, and they're going to try to take the witches around the outside, the top right of the base here, and the bottom left of the base. And then you're trying to pierce through the middle with this big wrecking ball type kill squad. Uh, the, the, the clan castle troops come out. I, I have two poison spells for the clan castle troops. Uh, I always suggest, uh, especially if you don't know what's in the clan castle, to bring a couple poison spells. Uh, most of the time that means that you're going to use jump instead of earthquake. Most of the time if you're using earthquake, you don't, you don't have the room to bring the poison spells. So um, if you're doing a fresh hit in war, you might want to use the jump spells and the poison spells because that will really help you get through those clan castle troops. Now in this attack, you also want two jump, like we're using the jump spells and the poison. You want to use two different jump spells. You want, to, you want one jump spell for the second set of walls. So you want to push through the outside set of walls and then use the jump spell on the next set of walls. And then you have another jump spell to get yourself out of the core. Uh, that, that prevents you from being stuck in the core with all those defenses shooting in on you. And that's, it's very important not to get stuck in the core. That's where 90% of your fails will either fail on the outside wall, because the wall breakers failed and you get stuck out there and you get pounded, or they fail once you have reached the core, and now you have like a semicircle of defenses just beating the crap out of you all at one time. So... Easily three starred this base and this is Sable attacking too easy and too easy is the stronger of the two bases It's not a it's not a bad base uh, The base wasn't the problem the what, what, what it was was this is a fantastic And, and I mean a fantastic attack We I, I saw it five or six times before it kind of clicked in my head. Wow. This is gonna be one of those attacks that Might just be one of those unstoppable attacks especially at Town Hall 9 so, um, another friendly challenge. This is the last practice from, uh, from Major League Weird. Nice name. Major. Done the same way. Starts off at the top left, uh, top, top right and bottom, uh, with two sets of witches with a wizard intermixed with it and, uh, the healers on top of them and just going, going at it, clearing out the trash buildings, creating the funnel. Then he puts the jump spell over the outside wall in the second set of walls And I believe the archer queen was right there to meet him So it's it's a good idea to put the jump spell right there on the outer wall in that case So that's a that's actually a fairly good point to make if you're Attacking in the archer queen is in the compartment that you're attacking You don't want to try to beat through that outside wall because what could happen is you could have your troops target the archer queen And they'll stop attacking the wall and they'll start targeting the archer queen And that's when you have the archer queen take out a ton of troops so just jump right over that wall, take out the Archer Queen, put the heal spell on it, put the rage spell right there on her, uh, and hopefully take care of the Archer Queen as quickly as possible. And if you get, if you have a little luck, you can take care of the Archer Queen and the Clan Castle troops with that first rage and heal. Ideally, you want to have a heal down and a rage and, and have to deal with all of the enemy troops because the Clan Castle is probably the biggest defensive structure on the base. I know it doesn't have any defense or, you know, guns or anything, but all those troops that come out, if you look at all their DPS put together, and then you can take in consideration the range that they have, that is a huge defensive weapon. You want to take care of those clan castle troops with the rage spell and use the heal spell to protect yourself at that time. And then the queen is very similar to the clan castle troops. The queen, if it's a max queen, she's she has tons and tons of damage per second, and her range is just phenomenal because she has range herself, where she can go and then the range of the crossbow on top of that is great so I think this is the uh, I, I believe he used five or six or seven attacks last night in the chat to show us all what was going on I think he got four or five out of out of seven if he did seven he got five three stars I think he failed twice maybe three times but I mean the the fails are 79 80 percent and it's just because he, he didn't quite get the spells off right or he didn't go in the right part of the base a lot of the bases that we have in the clan, if you're not familiar with them, they all have pretty big pitfalls in them. So you might end up walking right into the Tesla farm. So what you, you know, there's there's even great attacks can you can you can walk right into a trap and, and not and not do anything with it. So, uh, so we decided okay, we haven't used the attack much, but it's good enough that we're gonna take a chance and use it in war. So. 
the way we attack in war is from the bottom up. So we have our lower players are attacking, have been attacking. Uh, kind of slow going at first. Uh, kind of like the last war we did where it was kind of slow going at first. Uh, until the bigger players start getting in, then all of a sudden we have all this action. So this this attack right here was in war. This is Neon Knight. And he is attacking their 39, which I know is low on the list. It's got town, it's got level 8 walls or Town Hall 8 walls. A lot of Town Hall 8 defenses. But this, as far as I know, is his first attempt at this particular attack. Um, and he goes in, starts off in the two corners with the witches and the healers, uh, the two witch walks. And then he puts the big bulk of troops in the middle of it, which is the, the clan castle bowlers, his king, his queen, has two more healers on it. Uh, jumps into the into the base from the outer walls, puts a poison spell down. The balloons that come out of the clan castle get caught up in the poison spell. Then puts the raid spell down, and now his queen's going to work, smashing on the core. He's got the bowlers going through the core. He's got the witches on the outside, on both sides, going around the outside of the base. He's got a bowler. I see rocks going on the on the outside top bottom and he's pushing through he's already got through the core and now he's about to tackle the second part of the base the back end of the base and as you can see already he's got tons of camp space worth of troops up and now in comes the balloons he puts the balloons in as soon as those air defenses are taken down and now as those point defenses are shooting down at the skeletons trying to take out the skeletons now they're going to have some balloons rain down on top of them and now we're starting to see the the real power of this attack there's so many different elements in it. There's so many different ways. And, and, you know, when you're using a troop like a witch, she's regenerating skeletons all the time. So you may have uh, a 10 or 15 second lull where all the skeletons get beat up and you only have 5 or 6 witches left. But then about 10 seconds later, you may have 50 or 60 skeletons built up again. And now all of a sudden you have an entirely fresh war, uh, war party army. And you have this big, giant, powerful damage per second army blasting through the second part of the base. So it's very important to have troops like the Witch and, and troops like the Healer that can change. You don't have the attack starting off with 200 troops and it's slowly dwindling down to nothing. You have the attack start off with 200 troops and then a few minutes later it's got 245, 270 troops on the, on the board because of all the skeletons. And all the troops go down in health and go down and go down and, and then all of a sudden there's a small little lull in the defenses and all those troops are healed back up because of the healers. So between the witches with the skeletons and the healers, we have a lot of re rejuvenation, regeneration going on in the attack. And those type of attacks are very hard to defend. <clears throat> so, last attack. Uh, this is majorly weird. Now this is an attack on, let's see, I think it's 32, 22 first, 32. Again, we, we see a lot of drop down attacks in these wars. Um, done for a reason, we drop down, we take care of the lower bases, we build our way up to the top end. And it saves, it saves on attacks. I mean, we've we just seen tons of results with this. Um, if anyone doesn't understand how important a drop down attack is their ego that tells me a lot about their ego because these drop down attacks are vital for for a clan to to uh minimize the amount of attacks they use on one base the clans that we face that do the mirror attacking at first i used to think that if a clan could mirror attack they had something going for them now i think that if a clan is mirror attacking then they have a problem with the egos because there's no reason to do that um from what I understand, we don't get matched up base by base by Supercell. So if my clan of 10, or let's say 10 and 10 maybe, but let's say my clan of 50 gets matched up with their clan of 50, number 37 is not going to be the same as 37 across the board. That's not, that's not how it works. So picking the appropriate base is very important. And I would always suggest picking a base that you can 3 star, especially on that first attack. Because you don't get to look at anything, you don't know what's going on as far as your traps or anything. You don't know what the clan castle troops are. So drop down a little bit to try to get a 3 star on that first attack. <clears throat> little little word to the wise for war. <laughs> okay, so, new attack. New attack to me, I don't know if it's new to you. It's called the bitch slap. Don't say it around your kids. Come on guys, you don't have to do that. But, do say it to your clan mates. Uh, this is a great attack uh, the Witches are back in full swing people. This is what this means. These witches are going to be used You learn how to use them and learn how to defend against them because you were going to see them coming across your base and soon So 
if you're still watching, thanks for watching to the end. If you haven't subbed to the channel yet, please do. We, we're running out of subscriptions. You want you want to get one of the last ones available. So subscribe to the channel. Appreciate everyone for watching. Until next time, this has been easy. Take care, everyone.